It's not whether or not we're going through a global warming period. We were. We're not now. You know, God's still up there. We're now going through a cooling spell. The idea that global warming has stopped, whether by the hand of a deity or some unknown act of nature, is frequently asserted on the Internet, and it's popped up quite a bit on my channel. The first thing to do when confronted with any assertion is to ask where it comes from. Neither Inhofe nor any of the three posters cites a source. But a number of people tell me they heard this from James Cook University paleontologist Bob Carter. So what's his source? In April 2006, Carter published this claim in Britain's Sunday Telegraph, and it's been going round the internet ever since. It was even picked up by Fox News. Carter notes that since 1998, average temperatures across the globe have not increased at all and in fact have dropped ever so slightly. I'm sure that in order to be fair and balanced, Brit Hume immediately went to a real climate scientist to get the reaction of an expert to Carter's claim. So let's do the same. Carter claims his source is the temperature record of the UK's Climate Research Unit from 1998 to 2005. But the CRU doesn't say that the Earth is cooling at all. Quite the opposite. It says its data, compiled jointly with the Hadley Centre under the title Hadkrut, shows continued warming. And the other two bodies that monitor global surface temperatures show even more warming. NOAA's climate monitoring chief, Deke Arndt, told the Associated Press the last 10 years, that's from 1998 to 2008, are the warmest 10-year period of the modern record. Even if you analyse the trend during that 10 years, the trend is actually positive, which means warming. NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies says the year 2007 tied for second warmest in the period of instrumental data, behind the record warmth of 2005. Robert Fawcett and David Jones at the National Climate Centre in Australia did an independent study of the data from all three monitoring bodies and confirmed their conclusions. So how come the world's three temperature monitoring organisations and an independent study by experts say the world was warming at a time that Carter says it was cooling? That's actually quite easy to answer. Carter misunderstood how temperature trends are analysed. He simply put a ruler from the highest peak he could find, 1998, and drew a line down to a lower peak, 2005, and from that it would seem fairly clear that temperatures were falling. But if things were that simple, we could draw a line from here to here and show that the Earth was warming up, or from here to here, and have it cool down again. Obviously, this isn't how it's done. As I said in my video, climate change isn't it natural. There's a reason for all these peaks and troughs. The Earth is subject to short-term cyclical fluctuations in temperature, and two of the most important are the 11-year solar cycle and what's called the El Nino Southern Oscillation. Both of these phenomena, especially the Pacific Oscillation, affect the global average. If we pull back from the time period Carter focused on, we can see that his starting point, 1998, showed an exceptional spike in global temperatures, because 1998 was an exceptionally strong El Nino year. Conversely, late 2007 not only saw a La Nina year, which lowered average temperatures, it coincided with the bottom of the 11-year solar cycle, when solar irradiance is at its weakest. To smooth out these background fluctuations, climate scientists take a moving average of temperatures, usually over a 5 or 10 or 11 year period. That's why experts say the moving average shows the underlying trend is still upwards. This isn't some devious method to show warming that isn't there. All climatologists, skeptics and proponents alike, use this method. It also flattens out peaks that might otherwise exaggerate the extent of warming, so it works both ways and it's used in other fields of science too. If Carter had submitted his hypothesis to a respected scientific journal, his mistakes would have been spotted during peer review. It'll be interesting to see how many people post messages saying the world must be cooling now because there was record snowfall in the eastern United States in February. But of course the eastern US is not the world, which is why it's called global warming. When temperatures all over the world are averaged out, Figures for 2009 show another increase. Let's move on to another myth that made it onto the forum of one of my videos. Again, no source. We simply don't know where this assertion comes from, but I have seen it copied and pasted all over the internet. And it's not correct. A study in the late 1990s, for example, showed that Uranus was cooling. 
In any case, if this claim is supposed to show that all the planets are being heated up by increased irradiance from the sun, that's not backed up by scientific research either. We don't need to go all the way out to Pluto to measure solar irradiance. We've got instruments in orbit that can do it directly and far more accurately. And they show no significant increase over the last 30 years. But I agree with the second point. The warming or cooling of other planets is obviously not the work of man. Planets are subject to many of the same factors that influence climate on Earth. According to research published in Nature, Mars is warming because dust storms have exposed darker ground, which absorbs more heat. Finally, this myth, also posted on my channel, is an interesting exercise in how to track down, or how some people don't bother to track down, the source of a claim. Fortunately, Nogaf has done something rare and given us a source, so we can have some fun and track this myth down. It comes from a blog by someone called Michael Andrews, who makes some astonishing claims. He says NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center has produced a new study, concluding that the sun is responsible for recent climate change. Evidence for climate changes based on solar radiation, the study apparently tells us, can be traced back as far as the Industrial Revolution. In other words, while every other major scientific body agrees with the conclusion that carbon dioxide is responsible for recent warming, NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center seems to be saying it's the sun. Why wasn't this headline news around the world? Andrews gives us a link to the study, this time calling it a research report. Well, actually, the link doesn't go to a study or a research report, but to an article on another blog called Science Daily. But that does lead us to the original source, a NASA article written by someone called Rani Gran, and here it is. Now we can start to unravel the myth. The first thing we can see is that this isn't a study or a research report at all. Rani Gran is a multimedia producer with NASA's Public Relations Department, and she doesn't write scientific studies or research reports. This is a publicity piece summarizing what we already know about the role of the sun in past climate. There's nothing new in this at all, which is why it sat on the internet for a year without getting much attention. It's not saying that climate change based on solar radiation can be traced back to the Industrial Revolution. Gran says the opposite, that since the Industrial Revolution, new forces have begun to exert significant influence on Earth's climate. And she quotes climatologists at Goddard who explain that these new influences are greenhouse gases. Anyone who's watched my videos on climate change will know that this kind of distortion and outright fabrication is so common, it's just not shocking anymore. It's not even interesting. We've come to expect it. What is interesting is that so many people copied and pasted Andrew's story onto other blogs without bothering to look at the alleged study itself. Then more people read the blogs and didn't bother to check the source either. Casting scepticism aside, they were quite willing to believe that one of the foremost climate institutes in the world was now blaming the sun for recent warming. So although I encourage people to post these myths on my channel, I'm more than happy to follow them to their source and debunk them, you could try checking the source yourself. Find out where the information comes from. Is the source reliable? Does the information you've been given accurately reflect the information from the source? As we've seen recently, even the IPCC can use bad sources. That's why I try to source all the information on my videos to peer-reviewed scientific papers published in reputable journals, or at least to qualified researchers and scientific institutes. Not amateur blogs, not gossip from my local bar, or radio shock jocks, or Sunday newspapers, or Glenn Beck, or Al Gore, or even the IPCC. So before you post the next urban myth, please check the information right back through as many blogs as it takes until you come to the original source and ensure that that source is based on research and not armchair speculation. And if you see a piece of information without a proper source, be sceptical.